Hello and welcome to this video on adding and subtracting negative numbers. Now in the previous video we looked at the idea of a number line. If we start at zero and we go right we're going up one, two, three, four, but we could also go down from zero so we'd have minus one, minus two, minus three, minus four, etc. And you can see there's a certain symmetry. We have ones either side of the zero and then we've got twos, threes, etc. symmetrical around zero. And when we want to add and subtract negative numbers, we can just think about where we're moving on this number line. So for example, if I said two minus five, then I can start at the two, and then I'm moving five positions down. When you subtract five, you're going five positions down the number line. One, two, three, four, five. And we can see we're now at negative three or minus three. What about if we were at minus four? and we were to add seven. Well, if we start at minus four, we can see we're adding one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and we're now here at three, so we must be at three. And a way to kind of do this in your head, if you're at minus four, if you add four, you get up to zero, but we've still got three left to add. We've used up four of that seven, but we've still got three left to add, so we'd know we'd be up to three. So if I had, for example, um, minus 10 plus 30, I could add 10 to get from minus 10 up to zero, but I've still got 20 left to add, so that gets me from zero up to 20. And it's the same with subtracting as well. If I had seven minus 13, when we start at seven, if you were to subtract seven, that would get you from seven all the way down to zero, but we've still got six left to subtract. So from zero, I'm subtracting another six, and that would get me down to negative six. What about if you had minus one and you subtract three? So we, we're starting at a negative number, and then we're subtracting a number. So we're at minus one, and we move down three positions, one, two, three. So that gets us down to minus four. Where it becomes more interesting is when we add a negative number or we subtract a negative number. Because in each case, I'm subtracting a positive number or adding a positive number. So what happens if you add a negative number or subtract a negative number? Well, to see what happens, let's consider this pattern here. If I had three plus two, what is that equal to? Well, obviously five. And then let's reduce this number by one each time. So three plus one, well, that's obviously four. If I have three plus zero, that's obviously three. And you can see as I reduce this number by one each time, I'm also reducing this number by one. So if I go further, I'm reducing this by one, one. If I reduce it by another one, that goes down to minus one. I'm just gonna put in brackets. The brackets don't really matter here. If I reduce that by one, I must get two. So it seems if I do three plus negative one, instead of moving up one position, you effectively move backwards one position. So you're actually subtracting one to get two. Three minus one would be two. And I can go further. Three plus negative two, I've reduced that by one, so I reduce this by one. And when we add that negative number, it's the same as subtracting. So this becomes three minus two. So basically, when you add a negative number, you instead subtract. What about subtracting a negative number? Well, if I did three minus two, that gives me one, and let's make a pattern again. If I did three minus one, that gets me two. If I did three minus zero, that gets me three. Can you see I'm reducing the number I'm subtracting each time by one, which means the result I get is one bigger each time. So let's continue this pattern. We've got two, one, zero. The next number in the pattern will be minus one. And this is going up, one, two, three, four. So when I subtract negative one, I actually move in the opposite direction. So instead of subtracting, I'm actually adding. So this effectively becomes three plus one which will be four. So when you subtract a negative number, you instead add. So let me write that. When you subtract a negative number, you instead add. And one way of thinking about it is if you have a plus and a minus next to each other, that effectively becomes a minus. So you can see when you've got the plus and minus next to each other, you can imagine those brackets are not there, then that can just be replaced with a minus. So it's three minus one. 
And similarly, if you had minus and plus next to each other, again, it becomes a minus. So they're different symbols, one a plus, one a minus, then it becomes minus. But if they're the same symbols, so if you had minus and minus, then it becomes plus. And that's only if they're together. So we've got minus and a minus here, so that could be replaced with a plus, three plus one. And that really is only if the symbols occur together. So this example here, you might think, oh, you've got a negative number and a positive number, so negative and positive is negative. Well, that's not true. That's only if the symbols, the minus and the plus symbol, are actually next to each other. If you've got minus 10 plus 30, you just think you're starting at minus 10 and you're going up 30 and think where you are on the number line. So let's finish with these examples. We've got 5 subtract 8. Well, if you think about the number line, you've got 0 here. You've got five here. When you subtract five initially, you get down from five to zero, but we've still got three left to subtract, so that gets us down to minus three. So the answer is negative three, or minus three. What about the second one? Minus five, minus eight. Minus five, subtract eight. Again, if we think about the number line, and eventually this will just be all mental. You won't need to write it out. If we're at minus five and we subtract eight, we're going to be even further away from zero, so that minus 5 is going to go down to minus 13. We're 8 further away from zero, so the answer is minus 13. What about the next one? We've got negative 5 plus 8. Well, if I start at minus 5 and I add 8, adding 5 will initially get you to zero, but I've still got to add another 3, so that gets me up to 3. So that's going to be 3. What about 4? 5 plus negative 8. Well, do you remember that if you have a plus and a minus symbol next to each other, that that can be replaced with a minus. You're adding a negative number, so you're instead subtracting. So it's 5 minus 8, which we already know is minus 3. What about the fifth one? We've got minus 5 minus negative 8. Now, the two minus symbols next to each other could replace with a plus, because when we subtract a negative number, we instead add. So minus 5 plus 8, and we already know that is equal to 3. What about the sixth one? 5 minus negative 8. When we subtract a negative, we're instead adding. We can replace the two minuses next to each other with plus, and 5 plus 8 is obviously 13. What about these next ones? 9 minus 4. Well, that's obviously 5. What about minus 9 plus 4? Well, just think about the number line. We're at minus 9. Here's 0. We're adding 4. That gets us 4 closer to 0, so we're now going to be up to minus 5. So minus 5. 9. 9 minus negative 4. The 2 minuses become a plus. So it's 9 plus 4, which is... 13, we've got 10 minus 9 plus negative 4. Well, the plus and the minus next to each other becomes minus, so it's minus 9 minus 4. Now, we're at minus 9 and we get 4 further away from 0, we're going down 4, we'll now be down to minus 13. 11, we've got minus 9, subtract negative 4, and we've got minus 9. The two minuses become a plus because we're subtracting a negative. And we already know that's minus 5 from earlier. And then 12, we've got minus 9, and we're subtracting 4. Well, that's the same as this one here, minus 9 and subtract 4, so we get minus 13.